The Gypsy Fiddle is definitely among the best fiddles I've ever worked with, both in terms of how it sounds, it just sounds phenomenal, and second, it's really easy to play slash write notes with. So I've got here this demo. It's kind of long because it's pretty much done, but I'm only going to play up through probably the end of pattern three, just because, uh, to save a little bit of time. But here is the demo. This was made in a live stream, by the way. If you want to go see that, you just look up Gypsy Fiddle live stream and you can see it there. It's the second half of the live stream. The first half no longer exists. So there's the Gypsy Fiddle in action, probably in a way, Red Room Audio never intended. The, there are occasional glitches, like audio pops and stuff. That's completely on my side. I've kind of capped out. I'm doing a lot of stuff in the mixer with a bunch of other plugins right now. But essentially, you got the general vibe of what you can do with this instrument. And if you go to that live stream, you'll see how easy it is to work with. So I didn't play anything in. I sequenced it all in using the various key switches. And I really quick want to just reference the walkthrough video for this because there is so much in here. It's I'm not even going to try and cover it all. There's a ton in here. They have a really, really smart key switch interpreter where some of the things are triggered by velocity. Other are tr others are triggered by actual key switches. And so for all those sorts of details, because you can really customize this to do pretty much exactly what you want, there's a link down below in the description that you can go and check out. So I've got a list here of things that I think make this fiddle truly special and really, really useful as a compositional tool. The first one is there's two styles of playing. So the first one is sort of your buttery, smooth, standard fiddle playing. And you can see that here as the, the grayish blue notes. These notes right here are all the standard kinds of things. And even, even these ones, all this stuff right here is part of the orangish, orange brownish um, key switches. And if I play this here, you'll sort of hear it. So this is all just there. There is, I do have a post reverb on and there's some post compression so I guess in the, for the sake of extreme transparency, I'm going to uh, disable this. So it sounds like this. Now I've got a bunch of things here. You might be going, whoa, that's a lot of stuff. Half of it's like special effects for the intro, like mixing these things in. And the verb comes on and off at times. So there's the fiddle itself, though. That's a great, super, super great dry sound. Legato sounds super smooth. Like, it's just really, really nice. So that's the first style of playing. And this is all the, the orange key switch stuff. And then the second type is the ones with the E on them. Uh, and these are the, the gypsy articulations. These have a lot more of the flavor to them. If we go to like pattern two, uses more of these. Sounds like this. So all the purple stuff is gonna be like the way more resonancy bowed kind of things. And then I actually don't remember putting that note there. 
So that's the two styles that I used here. But if we come in and let's just play around with it a little bit. Versus if we go to the sustain. here we've got also velocity labels next to them it's just freaking awesome how they've done this we can go for some of the others they have a couple of like really crazy ones in here and these are these ones are being triggered by key switches we could switch it up go to another one I'm a big fan of the spiccato on this one. So I'm playing on a little keyboard right here. And what I've done is I've actually set it up to work with a plugin called BRSO, which allows me to use different MIDI channels to switch between key switches, uh, which is my preferred way of working with sampled instruments when I'm inputting by the mouse. When I'm playing in, I use a big keyboard that actually has room to hit those key switches easily. But what I could also do if I really wanted to is come into tact and I could actually change where the key switches are very easily. I could change velocity sensitivities for different key switches. So maybe soft velocities will be spiccato and hard, velo hard velocities like high ones will be pizzicato. And I could go ahead and make a patch really easily that does that. I mean, you could do a lot of customizing here. So even if you have like a small keyboard, the playability is still very much an option for you. You just got to take the time to go ahead and just really quick customize it and create the patch that you want. This brings me to my next point, which is it's super easy to sequence and play things in because it's got a smart AI that looks at timing windows and how quickly you hit notes to determine what articulation it should do. So for example, it turns on right here if I'm playing legato and there's a timing window for that. It even shows you which direction the bowing is going. In addition to this, they've also got it so that if you hit notes simultaneously, I think it's like a 15 millisecond timing window, it will go ahead and play them polyphonically. Now you can set this of course using the mode and you can really get into the customization of this. But this is just fantastic because when you're coming in and I'm writing, for example, let's say I'm over here and I'm writing this part, I could just have the notes overlap ever so slightly and boom, it's, it's legato and it sounds great versus if I'm over here and I've got like pizzicato, I could quickly come in, change the key switch. And I, I mean, you can work extremely efficiently this way. I don't have any spots that have two notes at once, but it would literally be as easy as just writing in a second note and hitting play. And then boom. Now, of course, it's got to pick between legato or the other one. Uh, so there's there's going to be some decisions there. And if you really want dual legato, you're probably going to have to open a second patch to do that. But this is like, it's phenomenal when things are really well written like this. The next part that really stood out to me is the ornaments. So they've got all these ornaments here that you can go ahead and use. And I've used quite a few of them. Now, I used key switches traditionally, actually, for these. And they're used all over the place. All these like low notes, these are all key switches for various ornaments. I think pattern three probably has the best examples of them. So you can get some really, really cool sounds with these things. And so we have a variation into a, a spiccato right there. And we've got a nice turn that's happening right here. Right there, that's beautiful. And then we've got these lovely just sort of, I'm not sure what the official name for these are. I would just call them accented. And we've got all these glides. I mean, there's a lot of really, really cool things in here. And it's as simple, like we could just, we could try out a different one. And you heard that one quite a bit actually in the earlier phrases, we could try another. So you just have a ton of options when it comes to selecting your ornaments. And if I've already had this phrase, like I had the phrase done and I went in and added these things to add variation and expressivity to it. If you're playing in and you get your favorite ones on your key switches, you can just hit them whenever you want and away you go. This is extremely intuitive to use and it's kind of nice both ways because you can play it in, but you can also go back and 
add things in as sort of an afterthought thinking, hey, how could I make this sound even cooler? There are two other really cool things that I really quick just want to mention. And that is first, they have a string selection option. So you can actually, let me play a note. You can actually see the string that you're using and you can play all along that one string if that's something that you'd like to do. So this is, this is wildly cool. Um, something that can definitely change the tone. And if you're really into the details like that and you want to create a super authentic sound, you have the ability to do that. The second thing is they've added a pretty sweet effects rack. You could come in and go ahead and add effects, especially if you want to save things with patches so you can open it up in any production and get rolling quickly. You can do that. I tend to roll with external effects. It's just how I do. You may do different. So to wrap it up, there's an entire effects and phrase library present as well. And so you can actually load these up as separate WAV files if you want to work, because uh, sometimes it can be frustrating working with these things as MIDI phrases when you want a specific phrase or you can go ahead and use MIDI to trigger it, which makes sense in some cases. So we've got here some percussive hits and stuff. We've got our chops, scrapes. They've even got the performer that they recorded to whistle and do a bunch of like yelling and things. And then, yeah, we've got the scrapes, which are really, really great. Uh, they can add a lot of tension to a track. We've got some lyrical improvs. And they've got a bunch of these, just like you can go ahead and take your pick. So it's just this big color box, basically of fiddle samples that you can use to either spice something up, toss it in, flip a sample. I mean, there's an endless amount you could do with just this. And this comes with the multi sample. So that's just a really, really, really cool thing that they did. So that is the Gypsy Fiddle. If you have any questions about this, feel free to drop them in the comments down below or thoughts. I'm interested to hear what your first impressions are. Uh, I definitely recommend though, if you have like a technical question, go to the walkthrough video and you can also contact Red Room. They have fantastic support and they respond extremely quickly. So I definitely would urge you to give those questions to them directly. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.